Hey, all you sexy Leos. I just love Leos. You guys are the sun. You're the fifth house of fun and love and romance. I'm an Aquarius and I just have it for you Leos. I love you guys. I'm here to give you your March 2018 Astro Weather Forecast. I'm Zahara Stars with Illum Astrology. You can visit my site at www.illumastrology.blogspot.com uh, to read more about the aspects, to learn about astrology, whatever you want, or to uh, schedule a personal uh, you know, consultation for yourself. Otherwise, let's get started. Woo! Okay, so March is going to be a little crazy, okay? But that's okay. Crazy's good. Crazy's fun. It's mixing it up. It's bringing new energy. It's giving us chances to go back, revisit. Um, exes can come back. Ex-friends can come back. Old opportunities come back. We reap the rewards of um, our past efforts. Um, all because Mercury and Jupiter are going to go retrograde this month. It's going to start with Jupiter on the 8th. And then it's going to, later on on the 22nd, Mercury is going to turn retrograde. So we're starting the retrograde mania before all the planets go retrograde this year. Uh, yes, including Venus and Mars later on in the year. Um, but we're starting with Jupiter and then Mercury and, um, and followed by the rest of the planets. So what this means for you is Jupiter has been in your fourth house, home, family, and expansion and uh, expansion in these areas. So like you could spend more time with family. You could be looking for a new home. You could have expanded your home. You could have refixed your home. Um, you know, you could get in contact with family members you haven't been in contact with for a while, spend more time with um, the family. You know, whatever the situation is, the home environment, where you live, where you, where you find your comfort, where you go for security is being revamped and Jupiter does things in a big and cool way. We all love Jupiter. He's abundant. So that's where you're going to be seeing all your positive expansion energy happening for you. Okay. Now Mars has been transiting your fifth house of fun. All right. The fifth house is ruled by you. Yes. Leo's. And it's about confidence and self-expression and nobody knows how to express themselves in a glamorous way like a Leo does. And you guys are the life of the party. You guys are life force energy, the sun, you know. And so having Mars transit uh, your fifth house of, of self-expression and fun and creativity, you could find yourself invited to a lot of parties, a lot of social events. Uh, it's awesome for romance and love and sex. Yep, sex too, especially Mars because it rules over sex. It's our vitality. It's our physical energy. It's where we're putting our energy. So it's also sports and athleticism and, and uh, gambling and, you know, anything that has to do with recreation and fun. So it's definitely been more active, romantic for a lot of you, perhaps. Um, and it's a good time to meet somebody if you're a single woman, typically with Mars, because Mars represents the younger men or the men up to a particular age um, of fun that hit your fun house and invite you out, you know, that, um, you know, you have a lot of opportunities to have fun while Mars is transiting there. Um, and so, Mars will be there until the 17th of March, and then it's going to move into Capricorn, okay? And that's when we're going to have the new moon in Pisces, too. So Mars is going to actually move into Capricorn, uh, which is your sixth house of work and, uh, you know, daily routine, health and hygiene and, and uh, you know, uh, doing the laundry, taking out the trash, running errands. It's about refinement, perfectionism. So we want to improve in these areas. So right now, enjoy having fun. Enjoy getting invited out. Go out socialize. If you're single, definitely uh, go out and socialize if you're looking for somebody because it's a hot transit for love. Um, and then the new moon in Pisces that's going to occur on the 22nd that's going to occur in Pisces is going to activate your eighth house of other people's money. Okay. This is other people's money. This is also sex. It's also shared resources. It's the deep house. It's Pluto's house. Uh, it's about power struggles too, negatively. Um, it's about intense desires, intense, uh, experience in general. Um, and having a new moon here is going to highlight 
for me, I see it as money opportunity. I see it as something's coming to an ending. You can get something, you can finalize something, pay something off to where you have more money available. You can open up new opportunities to meet partners that are willing to invest in you. You can get bank and credit card loans. Um, things like that can open up for you. Some of you might be looking for a loan and you, you know, you're going to get it. Um, there's going to be a lot of new energy put in there, but it's also the house of depth and, 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 and connections deep connections uh, sexual liaisons and connections so having Mars in your you know in your fifth house of love and romance and then this new moon that's gonna uh, kick in in your eighth house uh, could definitely bring a across a intense sexual partner as well somebody that you can really connect with um, just on another level but I really do see this as activating this this money for you money coming from other sources um, definitely being activated okay and so just keep an eye on that that's on the 17th the new moon that's occurring in Pisces Mercury and Venus are going to enter uh, Aries, okay? This is going to be a little bit of a slowdown phase, more, um, you know, not, not entirely like a slowdown, slowdown phase. <laughs> because it's actually gonna be the opposite of a slowdown phase, but I'm gonna explain what I'm saying. Um, because Jupiter's gonna be retrograding two days uh, after uh, you know Mercury and Venus move into Aries, which is actually a much more aggressive, dynamic, just do it energy. And for you guys, it's gonna be happening in the ninth house of long distance travel and foreign and learning something new and philosophy and expanding your horizons um, when Venus, uh, and Venus and Mercury both move in to Aries, but there's a couple of aspects. Um, on the 11th, Mercury's gonna square Saturn, um, which is gonna slow down that energy because Mercury is in Aries, but Saturn always slows everything down, blocks things, uh, sets restrictions, whatnot. So the day, so so basically what I'm trying to tell you is that on the on the 11th, it's not really a great day to, to uh, have a, a really important conversation or to, um, you know, it's not going to be a very expressive day. You might feel like things are kind of slowed down, blocked or, or something, but not too much because Mars will be in Sagittarius and it's going to try and Uranus that day. So it's going to be like a conflict between head and head and action. It's like, you're going to want to just do something and be impulsive, you know, and it's a good day to do so. I mean, especially with Mars trying Uranus, um, and Aries on the 11th. Um, because it's like any action that you take that's bold action. Aries is just action. Uranus is trying something different, doing it unique. And Mars is just pure energy. Um, but having the Mercury square Saturn on that day is kind of like you're going to have head and action conflict. It's going to be like you're going to want to think things through first. But your body's going, just go, just do it. So if there's any action you want to take, you might find yourself doubting yourself. But you know what? Don't. Just go ahead and take a risk and just go ahead and do it because things are going to pick up starting from the 6th when Mercury moves into Aries and Venus moves into Aries because Aries is just a a very dynamic action oriented just do it sign impulsive and so like a lot of the times we want to just say what's on our mind or express ourselves um but because Jupiter's turning retrograde on the 8th, we're going to be revisiting, going back. So we're going to be internalizing a lot more. So it's kind of an interesting energy um, happening. And some of the aspects, uh, you know, within the month, um, they're all actually very positive. Minus the 23rd when, um, actually, let's go back before, minus the 13th. Okay, so I'm going to give you some days not to do stuff or maybe not to make some critical action and also to be mindful of how you might be behaving. Okay, just because because they're kind of impulsive energy um, and also not very tactful energy. Okay, so um, I'm going with uh, the 13th when Venus and Aries is going to square Saturn and Capricorn because that's our love life is Venus and Saturn is restrictions, blockages, and it can show us our weakest links and it can point out people's faults and flaws and we can get frustrated and we're just not in the best of moods to be like, you know, so if you're in a love relationship, you might be ultra picky on your partner. Um, so just be careful um, on that day. Don't make any rash decisions, okay? And also on the 23rd when Venus in Aries is gonna square Pluto, this is kind of an all or nothing, my way or the highway energy. And so we can be kind of compulsive there too. Now, if you're somebody who's been passive, Leos, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> but, you know, or has it been in a situation that you've been wanting to get out, then this is gonna be a day you're likely to really 
you know, want to and to maybe even say something about it. Um, because, you know, Pluto wants us to stand up for ourselves, wants us to have boundaries and restrictions and, you know, to have the courage to say, hey, enough is enough. So if you're in a situation where enough is enough, this is a day, the 23rd, that you're probably going to say enough is enough. Um, but on the 13th is when Venus is square Saturn. And that's the day that you're going to be a little bit more picky and probably grouchy, probably not in the best mood. I know I'm not. I can be very impatient uh, when Venus is square Saturn. Um, so those are the only two days. But the rest of the month is fantastic. I mean, the two full moons, the, uh, the one on the first of the month, March 1st, full moon in Virgo. You know, um, this, these full moons. And then on the 30th, uh, the 31st is another full moon in Libra. And this is like, you know, that's what makes it a blue moon is that there's two full moons in the same month. And this is a lot of energy, okay? Illumination, things coming out from being hidden, awareness, uh, intuition. All this stuff is going to be kicked up in these houses for you guys. Um, and it's going to really uh, illuminate your second house of money and then your third house of communication, Okay, so um, yeah, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have uh, things that maybe you, you weren't aware of become suddenly you're gonna become aware of them. Um, you can also you know find out things that you didn't know just in terms about uh, of of like you know maybe a new outlet for money in your second house and maybe a new way of communicating in your third house. Um, you know, it's, it's just, yeah, it, it's going to be illuminations. Okay. A lot of things that are just going to come to you and you're going to make decisions and you're going to figure things out. Okay. In those areas. Um, so yeah. And then we got, you know, Jupiter turning retrograde on the eighth and then Mercury turning retrograde on the 22nd. Um, and that's all about revisiting, you know, revisiting, um, you know, some of you could be looking to find a new place to move with Jupiter retrograding your fourth house, expanding your home, you know, anything like that. If you're in real estate, you can get clients back that weren't interested before, um, suddenly interested now. Um, and then with Mercury uh, retrograde in Aries, which is uh, going to be your ninth house of expansion, higher learning, uh, you know, travel even, okay, travel, uh, you know, court, anything that's to do with politics, uh, philosophy, religion, all that stuff, traveling, um, and even learning a new something, learning something new, okay, that's what it looks like, a lot of you might be like taking a new course or learning something new, okay, and some of you that might be into publishing or want to publish something, um, that's going to be enhanced too when Mercury turns retrograde in Aries, um, but you can go back to a place that you visited before, you know, with retrogrades, um, it's also just retrograde period, meaning that people from the past come back uh those of you waiting to hear from an ex perhaps this is the time it there's it's the most common time it doesn't mean it's gonna but it's when it's most likely um and these could be friends these can be old partnerships these can be all sorts of things so it's a lot of revisiting redoing making changes uh definitely um you know but your home life is definitely enhanced and you know learning something new is definitely on the horizon but right now it seems like you're having fun getting invited out you know that's that's all going to be coming up finding love um going back and revisiting old lovers there's going to be a lot of that going on you know it just see if it seems fit for you but overall it's going to be a fantastic month most of the aspects are really really helpful um and there's going to be a lot illuminated for you uh, a lot of revisiting things and, uh, you know, putting them to play, opportunities coming back, uh, old relationships having an opportunity to reconnect, a lot of internalization, understanding things, figuring things out, getting ready to move to the next level. Um, when all the planets just start beaming right into Aries, it's going to be a lot more action going on and stuff. So um, this about does it for you guys. I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to get all of my latest. I have a lot of stuff I'm planning on uploading, um, that I think you guys will find helpful. Um, and also if you found me on YouTube, you can visit my site at www.illumastrology.blogspot.com, uh, to read about all the aspects, to learn about astrology, to set up a private consultation, um, anyway, this about does it for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and please do check back for April. 
Have a fabulous month.